Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to containerize a Flask API for Python. First off, you're going to want to make sure that Docker Desktop is running, and I've shown you that just at the beginning. And then you're going to just create a directory, I'm just going to call mine Python, Python Docker Hello World API. I'm going to change into that directory using the cd command. This is on a Mac, by the way. If you're on Windows, you can do this manually. Um, but yeah, I'm just using the command line for simplicity of showing you everything. So I'm opening up Nano, which is just a text editor. So you can use any text editor you want to add um, files to the folder. And from Flask, I'm going to import Flask. I'm going to set up my app. And then I'm going to add a couple of routes to my app that when called will give the API results. I'm just going to have a basic hello world. And it's just going to return hello world. This part's just going to run my app and specify the different ports. Just specifying the host as localhost. And for port, I'm going to use port 5000. I can go ahead and save that. And give it a name. Just calling mine app.py. So now that I've got my Python app, I can go ahead and create my requirements.txt. And that's going to be used basically by my Docker file to ensure that I have all the, um, the Python packages or modules that I need installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and define my Docker file. So first off, I'm going to have from Python 3.9 Slim Buster. And this line basically specifies that the base image for our Docker container is using the Python 3.9 Slim um, version. And then we've got this working directory slash app, and that sets the working directory inside the container to slash app, and means that any subsequent commands will be executed relative to this directory. Then we're going to copy the requirements.txt file from the host machine, so the, the um, my folder, which I'm currently in on my machine, to the working directory that was specified above. And then from there, we can run this pip install um, on the requirements.txt, which will install those um, requirements and allow them to run when we run our image so that we don't have any errors inside our api.py file. Then I'm just copying all the files from the directory into slash app and exposing port 5000 as that's the port that our API is running on. And then I'm running the command python app.py and that basically will run that command and enable the API to run. So now I'm just saving my Docker file. So I'm just doing a Docker build help just to check the different commands available. If you have any um, commands that you're not quite sure on what to do, you can just do dash dash help and it'll give you a bit of information on what you need to do.
So this um, Docker build hello world API dot, it's just basically going to go ahead and build my um, image, but you can see that from my Docker file, but you can see that I've got this issue where it says copy requirements dot text, but that should be dot txt because that's what I've saved my file as. Just a little bit of a typo there. So if I go save and run that command again, it should build my hello world API image. And you can see that that image is there now, if I run that docker images command. I'm running, going to run a container using that image and I'm specifying that I want the port that I access it on to be 5134. And you can see if I open that in a browser that it shows hello world. If I go to 5000, even though that's what's running on the container, it actually doesn't work because I've mapped it to port 5134. You can also run it with dash D and that will mean that you can run multiple without having the command line sort of attached to it. And you can see I did Docker PS and it just sort of checks what Docker containers are running. And now I can run a second container with that same image. And you can see they're both running, one on 5134 and one on 5135. If I do any other port, then it's not going to have anything running there because I've only got those two Docker containers running. And I'm just going to do a docker kill to kill those um, different containers. So you can specify different things, like you can specify, specify the container ID or the container name. Container names often more friendly, obviously. You can see I've got nothing running anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and log into Docker, Docker Hub. I'm doing this so that I can show you how to push an image to Docker Hub. That means that you'll be able to use it if you wanted to like have an image published for people to use. So to publish an image, you're going to do a docker push and you're going to need to also specify um, the tag for the image that you're wanting to push. So I'm going to go ahead and tag that one. Now, there are probably more efficient ways you can do this. Um, I'm a beginner, so yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and run my container again, and you can say that it says, this is a development server. Do not use it in a production deployment. Use a production WSGI server instead. So let's go ahead and make sure that we do that so that people can use it in production if they want to. So first off, we're going to go ahead and separate the um, definition of our app from the running of our app. So I'm just going to take out that running of the app and I'm going to create a new file for the running of the app. I'm also going to update my requirements.txt to include a new requirement, which will be the more production grade server that my API will run on. It's called G Unicorn. Gonna create my one for running it now. So I'm gonna um, import app from app.
and I'm going to run my app using GUnicorn. So we're going to go ahead and edit this command line. So we're going to make it command G unicorn WSGI colon app and with the um, with dash B and we're going to specify that basically we want it to listen on all available network interfaces on port 5000. The dash B is basically setting the um, interface and port for the server to listen on and we're specifying that we want to use the GUnicorn um, HTTP server to run the app from the WSGI module. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now when my Docker file runs, it will run using GUnicorn. So I'll go ahead and build my image and now I can go ahead and run using it. And do that port mapping once again. You can see this time it says starting G-Unicorn but it didn't also say that it shouldn't be used in production so it's a bit more production grade and ready for use. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.